<laughs> While I do my introduction, Trevor has arrived, and yes, the good old transit. I understand that. Last week it took me yep. two and a half hours to get to work. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so when the transit system was down, it was like, ah, oh, we all rely on the good old transit. Welcome to the UVCU Circle. Uh, I'm Crystal Morris. I'm the Aboriginal Education Coordinator. And today we're excited to have Trevor Mack back. Uh, Trevor Mack is back. <laughs> that was our that was our catchy title too um, uh, for our registration system, as you all know. Trevor Mack is Chilkootin. Um, he's a First Nations filmmaker and currently living here in the Vancouver area. Um, he was raised by his mother, um, Barbara Mack, and the rest of his family has lived in the Williams Lake and the Anaheim. Um, area and he's lived in that area for most of your life so it was a big transition to move here to the city. Um, Trevor started working with media editing and film when he was only in elementary school. He created a video game <clears throat> montages and uploaded them to the internet where they received millions of views from around the world. He helped form a freelance video editing motion graphics and videography group called Viral Design and was flown across North America to produce prom pr to produce uh, promotional videos for companies such as what Red Bull, Steel Series, I don't know how to say Gunner. that. Gunner. Gunner Optics. After moving to Vancouver in 2011, Trevor was accepted into Capilano U University Motion Picture Arts Program where he completed his first year and later moved into the Indigenous Independent Digital Film Program, which he'll talk more about today. What I'm really interested in is the um, short film, and you talked a bit about it the last time you were here, and you were here in December of 2012 mm -hmm. um, about the blanketing, which yeah. of course we, you know, um, we've promoted that as the Chilkootin War of 1812. Mm -hmm. So you touched on that, and definitely that meets a lot of the curriculum in the Grades 8 to 12 program, a different views, an Aboriginal view yeah. on on this film. So I'm actually really pleased that Trevor's back today and he's going to talk about hopefully his exciting future, what what the next couple of weeks brings for him. And um, so yes, I'm actually going to turn the table over to Trevor and I will let him do some talking. And Oh yeah, thank you very much for having me. December, that it, it feels like I was only here like three months ago, like it's went by so fast, wow. Uh, yeah, when I was when I was here, uh, we I think the it was barely even in finished. I, you know, we shot it in August, and it was I finished the entire film in May. So, but I pretty much actually yeah, there's this whole because uh, I put on a big massive um, premiere in my hometown, and. Um, uh, it was May 3rd was the big premiere, and uh, um, <laughs> two weeks before May 3rd, the entire, essentially the entire film was deleted off of my computer, oh. and I essentially had to re-edit the entire film two weeks before this big premiere. You know, we had advertised it for two months, this big whole event, where, you know, we we're going to have prizes and raffle tickets and food and then I was I was like finishing it up and then it just like deleted right in front of me and I I didn't know what to do I was just kind of I like I was just like stood there I was so quiet and I was like well that's that's interesting so I like got advice from all of my you know filmmaker friends and cousins and family <laughs> if I should you know uh, what I should do, and they all said that, you know, it's going to turn out better than what it was, so, and it def it definitely did, so, and I think, I think, you know, that week of me staying up until 5 a.m. for an entire week, wow. it, that, <clears throat> I proved to myself that I wanted to do this for the rest of my life, kind of thing, and I think that if, I'm really, actually, I'm really thankful that it was deleted, a week before <laughs> the premiere happened. Yeah. So where was your opening? Was that in the Williams Lake? Yeah. That, 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 that was in Williams Lake. Yeah, the premiere, we had uh, the 450 people filled up the entire theater. I talked for about three hours and showed my start, the videos that I made when I was grade eight, you know, that, and then 
how it evolved and showed my videos and yeah. So where did the idea and the concept come from for the blanketing? Like where do you think that first came into being? I know I think, you grew up in that area, but when I think you, yeah, I think it was it was a really interesting time because I was moving from Williams Lake to Vancouver essentially by myself. Well, I, I lived in Langley with my aunt, but I, I worked a construction job, so I kind of had, I just, you know, wake up at 5 a.m., go to your work, go back home and go to sleep. I did that for a couple of months, and then I moved to North Vancouver to go to university for the motion picture arts program at CAP, and I was, I was really by myself, like I was not by myself, yeah, I guess, I didn't really know who I was, like culturally, and just in general. And um, I, I was dating um, an actress, Devry Jacobs, and she just starred in a big, really big film, Rhymes for Young Ghouls, which was at it's going all over the world. Um, and she was really pushing, because she's a Mohawk from Ganawage, mm -hmm. and she was she was really, you know, uh, influencing cultural into my life and at the same time I was kind of I wanted to discover my Chilcotin self and I wanted to really look back at all the history and everything and try to learn the language which I I should have because I took Chilcotin language in high school but I was a punk and I like you know <laughs> when you're when your whole classroom is full of cousins like it's hard to it's hard to like concentrate but I regretted not learning that in high school but so and then I wrote the script because I was really interested in the Chilcotin War and how it impacted BC, and um, so I was really into that. So I, I wrote a script for my um, my script writing class, and it was about this little standoff. You know, it was like three pages, three or four pages, and I got a really bad mark on it. <laughs> so I I he gave it back to me and he was like, I want you to to you know redo this, like redraft it and send it back, and I'll give you a better mark. So I, I, I got it back, and I was like, I wanted to prove him wrong, so, so you know, I kept on redoing it, and then I think I, I forgot to, like, hand it in, and it just got forgotten, but, like, handing it in-wise, but I still kept on doing it, and um, it just kind of, it kind of evolved, evolved, and as I was doing more research about the film, I was learning about myself and learning about my people, my culture, so it was kind of like a two-way street kind of thing, yeah. We're just having some problems with the lag still, so if it's okay with you guys, I just want to try switching wireless networks and see if that makes a difference. Okay. Okay. So Okay, so we're going to switch wireless networks. There, there se seems to be a lag at our end, just because we want you to all participate still. So we're going to try and something, do something on our end, and um, just stay in the room. It'll just take a couple minutes. Okay, go ahead, Catherine. Going to shut us down. It's weird. It's got like full bars and everything. Why? Yeah. No, their their reception is good, but the connection. Oh. You guys didn't have a TV last time I was here, did you? Wasn't it on the projector? Ah, uh, no, we Wasn't had it? no, we had the TV. The TV, oh. it's the camera that's new. Mm. Oh yeah. Uh, we had just a little, a little camera sitting. Oh yeah. Somewhere that. Yeah. Yeah. We also have really nice microphone. Right here. Whoa. <laughs> the USB microphone is awesome. It's just going to put it up on the table because when you turn on the video camera, it's like you see this big, big thing <laughs> right in the middle of the table. So. <laughs> Hi to Gwai, too. Oh, great. That's not working. It doesn't want to connect. So 
how long are you in Japan for? Is it Japan? Africa. Africa. Yeah, two months. Wow. Mm. What are you doing over there? I'm volunteering at a uh, tiger and lion sanctuary slash. Um, it's like this little program that they have where it's a tiger and lion sanctuary, and then they give us three weeks to go into the city and help out in the city. Okay. Wow. So you just go to one place, or do you go to? It's well, yeah, we're staying in one area. Yeah. And then for for two months, but we've got three weeks of free time. Mm -hmm. Wow, so you'll get to go see. Yeah, I can't wait. The world. Yeah. Is, did you get that volunteer opportunity through school? No, it was actually this, this old friend from high school just kind of messaged me. She was like, do you want to go to Africa? And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. So you just got to pay for your trip there? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, kind of How did your mom feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> my entire family doesn't want me to go, but <laughs> my entire family didn't want me to do this stuff anyways, like, you know, video. Yeah. And then, I guess, but I guess family is supposed to be like that, you know, kind of. Seeing and choosing what they want you to do for your career. Yeah. But how's Toronto? You went to Toronto. Yeah, right? I was in Toronto for Imaginative. And that was an amazing experience. Whatever came, happened to Inspire? Well, I don't know. I guess... They I just guess, don't contact you. Yeah, I guess they don't contact me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well. Or it's a surprise to everybody, right? Yeah. Well, because that's in, like, March, right? They would have listed everybody by now, right? No, I looked a couple of weeks ago. There was still nobody listed oh, really? in 2013. 2012, I think. They still have 2012 listed, but not 2013. Oh, well, wow. I guess I should look there again. But oh, I've, I'm, I'm teaching myself to really lower my expectations with everything. So, <laughs> oh, my expectations are a good thing. You get a lot accomplished. Like Toronto, what is it? The Independent Toronto Film Festival, and then there's a film the festival. Toronto Independent Film Festival, Red Nation American. Film Festival. Here in the city. Okay, this is the best we're gonna get. Hello. Yeah, that looks better. I think. How's that, everybody? It looks a little bit better. Faster, somewhat. Oh, it's about five or ten seconds faster. All we can do. I hope everybody can hear us now. We've reset um, on our end and taken a different approach. So we're hoping we didn't lose a lot of people. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you for being patient with us. Um, so Trevor, sorry about that. No problem. Okay, so we're hoping that you all were able to hear about how um, Trevor um, was able to put together where his idea came from to put together the blanketing. So would you like us to show that or would you like to talk some more? They're not going to be able to see it. Huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, so we, yeah, the, the whole thing was deleted and we had the, uh, we had the premiere event and it went, it went amazing, and um, I kind of just, th I threw it out there and submitted it to as many festivals as I could, but I didn't realize how much money it costs to submit to all these festivals. Right. Like a lot of money, and I wasn't, I didn't take that into account at first, so I submitted it to all the, you know, the biggest native ones, the biggest native film festivals, indigenous film festivals. And it was accepted into um, the Toronto Independent Film Festival, Red Nation Film Festival. Um, and Red Nation is out of here in Vancouver. No, Red, Red Nation, Nation is, um, that's in, I think it's in L.A. Oh, wow. Red Nation. It was also accepted into L.A. Skins, which is the bigger native film festival, but it was disqualified because they found out I submitted it to the Red Nation Film Festival. 
And they even they he's like the the director said that he had my accommodation set up and everything, and uh, and <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, I I for, I didn't I guess I didn't tell them that I submitted it, to, but I just forgot that I submitted it because you know I just submitted it to as many as I could, but I just forgot I sent it to all these and it was it didn't, but um yeah and Square Pegs Film Festival and. Um, Imaginative Film Festival. It's also um, going to be shown in a film festival in New Zealand as well. After Imaginative, I was talking with a lot of people. They want it to be shown there. So yeah. The sound is on, but no word is getting through. But we're still recording. connection is really really bad uh oh they're getting every other word these are the classrooms that have the students in them oh really mm -hmm. oh. um we're still recording though hey is still recording so and they're asking for us to still somebody else is getting a haphazard reception there isn't much we can do other than continue because yeah. we're, we're going to try and unplug. to be exclusive mm -hmm. and it's, it's hard especially when you know you're trying to get your film out there to as many film festivals as possible and all these film festivals want the first to be screened mm -hmm. so it's you know it's kind of it's hard but it's it's great when a film festival doesn't really care and they just want it anyways mm -hmm. what do you mean it's by screened screened like just screened in front of like accepted Oh, I see. So there's a screening process to screen out the ones that shouldn't be at that film. Festival. Yeah, yeah. There's. I think. I think. Uh, Imaginative must have had 400 submissions, all from indigenous filmmakers all over around the world. Wow. And mine was accepted. So how many? How many do they actually accept? Like, is there different categories like short? Yeah, yeah. There's. There's. There'll be short films, feature films. And some film festivals they have, you know, like new media. And yeah. So it was accepted into a short, which is pretty pretty rad. Well, with that many submissions, that is amazing. So how many film festivals was the blanketing accepted at? There like I think you mentioned four. I think it was uh, there's Toronto Independent Film Festival, Imaginative, Square Pegs, Red Nation. It was accepted to LA Skins and everything, but mm -hmm. they kind of took it out because of the premier status thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I still count it as accepted. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. And hopefully, uh, I'm, I'm waiting for two more. And, yeah. So, hopefully, best case scenario, seven, eight. Wow. For, yeah. That is far reaching. <laughs> <laughs> it really yeah. is. It really is. We were just talking. I think um, we're like, one day we will say, we knew Trevor. <laughs> I know that guy. <laughs> yeah, when he was beginning, when he was starting, you know, of course, you know, the, the connection to your mom and everything, working together in the interior. But, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's definitely a big honor for my first short to be shown in all these places. It's and I even had my first like review to in Toronto. Somebody actually like reviewed it mm -hmm. and like wrote an article and reviewed it. Like to somebody who has no connection to my life, like they reviewed it, which was so cool. So you you've got that. You've got a scrapbook going, right? So, People are yeah. taking these. <laughs> yeah, I've got yeah, they were it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. 
That's amazing. Okay. Even the VC? Okay. We seem to be experiencing some technical difficulties. I plugged all the routers too. <laughs> We've had worse problems on set yeah. and after set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, I deleted, I deleted an entire. Not only did like my film delete, but as I was transferring pictures or the files, I, I deleted an entire micro my, uh, memory card worth of my footage that I shot, and I had to like no backup. There, no backup, yeah, because it was on the memory card, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go back it up now, and then while it was doing, like, it deleted. Oh. But I was able to get the, it back, but it was so stressful, and it was just, oh. like, I can't wait until I can get somebody else to do that for me, <laughs> and not have to. I'm sure you can get a volunteer. Yeah. Students would love volunteering. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's really is there funding sources to put for um, to support you, or do you have to go for small business loans and stuff like that? Um, there was I had funding from for the blanketing. I had funding from family, from um, myself, and from friends. Mm -hmm. So and like family, friends, and everything. Um, and crowdfunding, so I made a video and I just asked, you know, essentially the internet if they if they wanted to see the film, they could support it and give it like five dollars. Uh, ah, yeah. interesting. So, no, it was there were no real, like real, I guess, investments for it. No loans, no. It would be interesting. Just a side thought. Now that I'm looking at all the provincial curriculum and the different level that the blanketing blanketing would actually mean, it would be interesting to know. And yeah. the school districts and the provincial, because they're revamping the provincial school curriculum, right, right now? And that if, what's that, sorry? Okay, we're back. We're back. Hello. Uh, Welcome yes, back. <laughs> yes, it is the downside of technology. Our apologies. Um, we're just having a discussion about the funding and how the funding came to be. And I was just speaking to Trevor about it would be interesting to have this the, the blanketing a part of you know BC curriculum as a learning resource tool for um, you know the First Nations studies and some of the social studies classes and what that I like I'm not entirely sure how that works but we um, did touch on the funding and um, there was a lot of family support and um, be prior to it prior to the filming of the blanketing but definitely interesting, and it's um, all, we, we were speaking of the different film festivals, so seven film festivals mm -hmm. yeah. is amazing for a young um, Aboriginal producer, and knowing that, I know I've watched The Blanketing, and it's like, it's, it's this amazing short film, and like I say, it's your version of the history mm -hmm. and how you seen the Chilkootin War. Yeah. Speaking of uh, the curriculum, though, actually, there was a, a museum in New York also wanted, really wanted a copy, so they could, they could kind of implement it over there. Mm -hmm. So actually, actually, I just reminded myself to send them <laughs> the copy. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's 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 been it's been pretty, pretty receptive, especially I guess in the, uh, I guess you know in the educational kind of my my cousin who is in Williams Lake and TRU. Um, her teacher is really interested in seeing it as well, so I have to send them a copy, which is yeah. It would be because um you know we touch on uh, you know a little bit of the you know the ro the war of 1812 and what role that played in our history, but you know to see this side of it in an actual um, uh, film put together on it would be, would be interesting. Um, so. I guess what I'm looking at is um, the small industry. We, you know, the North, or you know, Williams Lake, 
that area, the Chilkootin area, has produced some amazing actors and producers such as yourself. So is it really a small world? Do you know Daryl Dennis? I know you know Will, uh-huh. William Bellew, but do you know Daryl Dennis? Because he's in L.A. now, too. Yeah, yeah I, I actually, somebody told me to add him on Facebook, Daryl Dennis. So I did, and I kind of, I didn't really follow up, but yeah, I totally, I think it was my aunt who told me to add him on Facebook. But, no, I, I don't really know much about Daryl Dennis. I should because it's an industry of relationships. <laughs> yeah, he, so. he, it goes back to the day because I think him and I are in the same age bracket. But it was it was kind of funny because he was on North of 60, okay. right? He was an actor on that program. And when I met him was before he actually became an actor. And then, of course, he married an actress, I think, in the California area. And that's where his home and residence are. But, yeah, wow. it is a small world some fine yeah oh yeah i mean you've got i guess myself daryl you know william bellew you've got helen Hake brown who's doing amazing things you know really really great great you know woman aboriginal filmmaker uh you've got lisa charlie boy as well who's from um who's from redstone who's doing big things in Toronto, you know, starting her own urban native magazine and doing really big things. It's, yeah, I guess Chilcombe people are kind of taking over. <laughs> yeah. Coming back. Yes. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with us about the blanketing? I know we kind of probably cut out and some of the pieces that we talked about earlier were not heard by the participants. Um, I, I guess there's nothing really else except that it was it was definitely um, an amazing an amazing first experience into film, and I've I've sent the blanketing to a lot of a lot of important people in Toronto that I met, and they they gave me some criticism and feedback on it, which I really appreciated, mm-hmm. and uh, I I totally can agree with them. So I've got I think I've got a lot to learn still and that I have to kind of uh, specify you know exactly what I want to do instead of putting on too many hats and I think that was a perfect perfect film that I wanted to work with little babies I, I guess the three rules for film is like well for producers like you know never work with babies never work with animals and never work near water and I did two of them I did you know I worked with babies. I had like a do. I had a you know, a, I had a double baby. I had two babies in the film, and I had horses, and you know we had problems with res dogs, and like but and you know it, in the, it took place in the 1800s. I wanted to see if I could if I could do it if I could produce you know a film that is set in the 1800s. You know at 19 years old, 20 years old. Mm-hmm. And I, it's it's been it's everything has just been so positive. Even you know like even I've had some harsh harsh feedback criticism I would say, but that's all positive to me. You know I don't like to take things personal. It's, I just I take it as a positive so I can improve on that. So yeah. So it was really interesting when we actually had um, Will on, and you know he was speaking of the blanketing and his. Um, his piece in, oh gosh, Twilight, and um, one of the health directors, our participants up in Eskedem, Alkali Lake, they were talking about, you know, the past lives of, you know, um, young men and that we see something emerging. So did you know this is the type of work you wanted to do from a young age? And um, I think, I think, yeah, well, at, at first, actually, well, when I was when I was, I guess, in elementary school and even early high school, I wanted to be an astronaut, and like all kids. And then I realized that I wasn't smart enough to be an astronaut because astronauts you know, are really, really smart. So then I wanted to be an astronomer, which was like the next best thing. Mm-hmm. And then I realized I really hated math and everything. <laughs> and this was probably like in grade seven or grade six. So then... I really got into, you know, the Halo editing montage stuff, and that's when I really wanted to, I really wanted to 
get into that stuff. And I was, yeah, because when I watched movies, I was just really interested in, like, what is making this image happen? Like, we see an image, right? But how many people did it take to to set up the shot? How many people did it take to make the costumes? How many, you know, all the lights that are missing? And then I, I was kind of, I was the only guy who was interested in, you know, when all the videos that were shown in high school and all the kids are, like, talking or, you know, kind of ignoring it. And I was, I was really interested. I was, I was, I just kept on watching it. So I, I guess I think it, it, it went really naturally because I started off doing like it, things that I found really, really fun, like with the video games and Halo montage editing and making the trampoline videos. So they were like really fun. So I didn't think of them as like, oh. I got to do all this to be this, and then I got to do all this to be this, for that to be that. So it was just like a, like a natural ladder, I guess you could say. So was that one of your first like jobs that you were able to work from home, and you worked from like home to, on all these projects, or you just kind of did some volunteering and? Oh yeah, I it, I totally did volunteering. Uh, like my first job, I was I was uh, I filled up those water those big water jugs that you have in water coolers. Mm -hmm. I was like 15. But my first, yeah, I actually was starting to get somewhat of an income from me sitting at home making Halo videos. And, you know, my parents didn't like it. My mom didn't like it, I should say. My mom, my aunt, you know, you know everybody, they're like, you know, you're addicted to the computer, Trevor. You got to get off. <laughs> and, yeah, like I think they just had no clue what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And like I'm, I was like I'm like 15, 16 years old, and getting comments on videos that I made saying this was like the greatest video of this kind that they've ever seen, mm -hmm. and that I was their favorite Halo video editor. Right. And getting these comments at like 15 years old, it it just kept. I was I was almost getting like addicted to it because I wanted more people to experience. Like when I when I watch the Halo videos. Right. I want to. I want to be amazed. Like I want. Like when I watch films and everything, I want to be. Like, I want to be sitting in my chair and be like, "Wow!" So I want to create that experience for other people. Mm -hmm. And I think I was. I was getting addicted that I was making all these people go like, "Wow, that's awesome!" So I just kept on wanting to blow people's minds like more and more. So it, it kind of. I, it kind of. I, you know, watched interviews, watched tutorials about stuff. So. Yeah. That's neat. That is so neat when you're about the past and where people were and what they're thinking. It's not like you're you're old. Like you're just <laughs> you're still really young, you know, and you just have all these different experiences. Um we do have a question here from Trish. What kind of feedback have you been receiving from the festivals and where can the film be viewed? Netflix, iTunes, etc. What kind of feedback has been at the festivals? Well, I I think um, the feedback, well, because I've sent it to people afterwards in the festivals, and they've given me private feedback, mm -hmm. and they've essentially said, you know, a lot of the same things that they they want to see me uh, really specify. You know, is it writing that I want to do? Is it directing? Is it cinematography? Is it producing? Because that's that's what I did for the entire film, mm -hmm. and they've they've just been saying really really specify and try to find out you know what you really want to do and I think that's the main the main criticism but for the actual film um, it's been I mean I, I had a review published on the internet about it and that's the only thing that I've gotten back from like the general general public mm -hmm. you know everybody I think I think they're just I think they were just pretty proud that a 19, 20 year old kid was able to to do that and make it like that. So I think I think uh, obviously I have a lot to learn, and I think everybody knows that because I'm still like a kid. And they're they're just I guess they're just really proud that I was able to make to make this thing come from like from my head to an actual thing that's being screened in like seven, hopefully seven film festivals. So the content then. So it's mainly on you making a choice of which area 
but people are liking the content. But you wrote that script, right? You wrote yeah. the script, you produced it, you mm -hmm. shot it, you found the actors, you yeah. secured the funding to put this short film together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's been mostly the uh, the feedback. So I, and it's like I, I I I know what I need to improve on. And I, 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 you know, I can almost barely watch it now because, like, I'm just like, oh, I can do so much better now. <laughs> like, really, I can't, like, when, you know, I'll, somebody's, like, you know, at my house and they want to see it, I'll put it on the computer and, and then I'll leave the room. I'll be like, oh, I'm just going to get something to drink. And then I'll close the door and they'll watch it by themselves because I can't, like, because I know that I can do so much better in every single field now. So, so it's, uh, I, I, I've got, I've got a, I've got an idea. So you must have other producer friends. Do, you, do they go through the same sort of thing when they see a piece in a film festival or where you know where it might be posted that they're they become their own I, 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 worst critic? Like oh yeah, to, I, yeah, yeah, I know this. You know, from film school, this one guy named Manny Mahal. He's an amazing guy, greatest, nicest guy. But when it comes to his own work, mm -hmm. he will trash it. He will say so many bad things to it. And he, yeah, he's like, he's worse than me. He can't even, he, you know, he, sometimes he won't even let you watch it because it's, but, but he complete, he's done two short films and an entire feature film. Mm -hmm. And he's a year older than me. Wow. And like, but he, 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 he I don't know why, I guess it just must be, because like even with my, with the blanketing, I worked on it for so many months that every little thing I noticed but the general, you know, if you watched it, you would never notice it. You wouldn't notice it if you watched it five times. Mm -hmm. But because I sat in my computer chair and I was there for like five months working on every little little, little second that, you know, I was, I was aware of that little thing or that little tiny thing. And I was just like, ah, oh, but, you know, that, you know, if you were to watch it, you wouldn't. You, you we wouldn't pick it up. Yeah. Our eye would not see that. Yeah. So some, but the second part of that question is, where can the film be viewed? Um, I'm actually, I'm actually trying. Uh, it's been really hard because it's just been me. Mm -hmm. I, I designed a DVD cover. I printed out all these DVDs, D DVD prints, and I bought DVD cases. And then I'm gonna burn all of them onto DVDs. And we've lost everything. Hang oh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we it's yellow down there too. So we've it's, we've it just says we've totally lost connection. Mhm. Mm oh. Cuz it's not green. Down there it's usually green on the on the below that. Yeah, on the VC too. Oh, it's on UBC Secure as well, too. So both networks are working fine. Right, it's just that. But, hmm. but the but the button is yellow. I've never seen it yellow on the VC, so we've lost connection. That's normally green when we're recording. Really? Yeah, last time we got out, we got a Oh no. Look. That's the problem. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I have this um, thing about wearing my moccasins, and if I don't wear moccasins, it feels like we experience more problems. <laughs> Jeez. Just the energy. <laughs> you gotta wear them. I thought just one time. crashed mm. no is computer can I'm gonna ask them can you see us
Different layout? Yeah. Oh, you know why? Because that's the wrap session. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're going to do the wrap session. It's been a long time. <laughs> Do you find yourself wanting um, wanting to participate? Like you're you're still in school, right? Are you in school still? No. Oh, you're no. not. No, I actually I dropped out of the IIDF. Mhm. Mm so, yeah, yeah. When I, I was. I heard it was coming to an end. Anyhow, was it was that affected? Was Capilano University affected by the? Um, I thought they were cutting back some of the digital media here in the province. Well, I well, there's been less and less. Um, attendance for them, so I think this might be the last year. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm out. I'm out, skis. Okay, you're back on up there. I just have to see. You go. You're good to go. Talk to us about your past. What about your future? What does your exciting future hold? Well, hopefully, hopefully some uh, some great stuff. I mean, I when I, when I was in Imaginative, my uh, short uh, a short script of mine, I pitched it to um, a competition in. Um, in, at the Imaginative, and it was shortlisted, so it was accepted as a finalist mm -hmm. for their pitch competition, where I would have won $5,000 cash, $2,000 in um, in production money, in, in equipment rental money. I would have gotten, um, you know, I would have worked with somebody from the NFBE National Film Board of Canada, and but so I, I pitched it there. And it was it was amazing. I pitched in front of I guess it must have been a hundred people, and you know these five judge panelists from from you know Toronto International Film Festival, from a, you know a feature film in New Zealand, and so I pitched it and I didn't get I didn't get I didn't get the prize, but um, there must have been four people, four important people in the industry that came out to me afterwards, mm -hmm. and. You know, the biggest person was uh, uh, Alana Sabomsuin, mm -hmm. who is like a legendary First Nations filmmaker. She's like 80 years old. She's made 20 films. You know, her newest film is playing in Toronto, and it was accepted into like all these film festivals. And she came up to me. She's so tiny and she's so cute. She's like, you know, 80, and she <laughs> went up to me and she gave me a big hug. <laughs> And she went up to me like four or five times throughout the whole festival, and she was like, "Oh, Trevor, you were so amazing." And I was like, "Wow, oh, that's so cool to have her to do that." So, um, yeah, it was a really positive for my next short film. You know, the I got some business cards, and my my biggest goal. I, I, I at Imaginative, I I went to a lot of panels, and I learned a lot of stuff about what to do next with my short film, you know, like I want to set a goal and I want it for my short film, my next short film, a specific goal. And I want, um, you know, other people to be involved, mm -hmm. like a producer, you know, a, you know, actual costume designer, like, so I'm not doing everything myself. So, yeah. And so I've gotten really, really good feedback for my next short film, and I'm just kind of in the early stages of writing, writing grants and trying to find a production company slash like producer. Yeah, so I've and hopefully be filming that next summer, and then I want to move to Toronto just before Imaginative next year. Wow. So yeah, I think that's. Uh, so you're gonna hit the Toronto Film Festival area. Yeah, early. with hopefully with a bang with my next short film and that kind of I, I want it to be I, definitely bigger than the blanketing. Wow. Yeah. 
Sell seven film festivals, though. That's pretty good for a first short film. Somebody is asking, how has the film been received among the communities? And I know when you had the premiere, you said you had a sellout. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was it was it was it uh, was you know all the reserves around Williams Lake as well as just the Williams Lake population. There was so many different cultures that came together, which was what I wanted you know to have. You know, it is a First Nations film, but the community is what helped create create the film. So um, it's been it's been like really good. You know, I, you know, it's the same thing. It's I guess you know, a lot of the times they're just really happy and really proud that a kid made that. And you know, I think it's 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 like it's like um, you know, things can things can get better obviously like my skills in writing and directing and my choice of choice of genre or film but but when I guess when when a kid makes it you can't really I guess you can't really teach that so I guess that's what they're really they're just happy about that which I'm grateful for so I mean I haven't screened it in a lot of communities per se which is what I want to do I you know I did the event three-hour event and I, had, I did my talk and show my videos and people said that like it would be great if I did that event in Kamloops or if I did that in um, Prince George you know so I mean yeah yeah that would be great because um, we were just talking um, I can't remember to who it was about UVic because they had a, a, a film night over there as well and that was quite well received they were actually um, doing different um, Aboriginal films and producers. And I'm pretty sure they were highlighting them, if I remember correctly. I don't remember who it was, but you know, something like that, the same kind of concept across the different areas, Cam yeah. Kamloops and um, probably even Penticton and um, Victoria, Van well, of course, here, here in Vancouver. Um, but Fraser, Chilliwack area, yeah. the Stolos. Oh, which reminds me, it was accepted into the Vancouver Indigenous Media Arts Festival, too. When's so that? That's November 6th to 11th. So it's playing on November 7th in Vancouver. I just totally remembered about that. Oh, right. I received an invite for that. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. it was accepted in there. So I'm thankful for that because everybody in Vancouver, they're just like, Trevor, when can we see it? So November 7th, if you're in Vancouver. Except I won't be here. I'll be in Africa, so. Right. We were talking about, you know, when the system kind of goes down, about Trevor's future, where his future is bringing him. And he is leaving to Africa in the next week. Week, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there for two months. And, yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be there for two months in South Africa, actually, uh, volunteering at a uh, tiger and lion sanctuary. And it's going to be a pretty amazing, amazing experience. So Mr. Joe, who's from the, Ch is that the Chilliwack School District? Is actually asking, is requesting a copy of the film. So what I think we can do for Mr. Joe on our behalf, Catherine, is we will purchase uh, a couple of those films and um, support you and also um, support some of the school districts and ensure you get copies of the film yeah hey that's totally that's yeah and I'll and on the DVDs I'll actually be adding a, a behind the scenes like a five minute behind the scenes I know we showed a behind the scenes last time but uh, this one will be in a little extended behind the scenes so I'm really trying like I'm I've got I've got a I've with my job and my work and everything I'm really trying to get all these DVDs ready before I go to Africa but mm -hmm. I think I will, but I won't be able to like send it. I'll have, I'll just have them all in a big stack in like, mm -hmm. you know, at my auntie, at my auntie Terry's house or something. But I think when I when I come back, you know, in December, December 30th, is when I'm getting actually, you know, set up a website where if you want to purchase the DVD, you know, you can ship it, mm -hmm. and you know, or you know, educational purposes for for all of that. So, yeah. So a little bit more about your past history, because I know there's probably participants that didn't see your last presentation. Um, Trevor's done 
and gone into different areas. Like we talked uh, more about it in our last session last year. Um, it just hard to believe the time has flown like you've done so much in, so much more in a short period of time because Trevor <laughs> was actually nominated for an inspire award so which, which was just totally amazing right that um, also um, you participated in the Red Bull crash type oh yeah yeah that's oh, so that's been a little bit ago when yeah it was December when I came in that's when I just came back from Niagara Falls mm -hmm. and I placed 76th out of 300 in the world so uh, I was then qualified for the world championship finale in Quebec City in March. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was flown in March, and we went there to Quebec City. You know, you're getting all ready, getting all amped up, and then I pretty much smashed my ankle in the training run. So I was just in crutches so, the entire time. Oh, so for those of you who are participating don't know what Red Bull Crash Dice is, just just tell us what that is about. Like, if, if you Google Trevor Mack, you will see all these different um, projects that he's been working on. And a piece of that is his competing in the Red Bull Crash Dice. So if you can just explain. Yeah, yeah. Red Bull Crash Dice is uh, ice cross downhill. And just think of, I guess, downhill skiing, and hockey, like combined, going through a city, speed skating. speed skating, going through a city, going through jumps on ice on this track and four people at once, and that's what I do. And I've been doing so since I was 18. That's when I first qualified for the world championships. And yeah, I mean, it's it's still hard because you know I'm I'm still going against like men, like <laughs> like you know like. I'm still like a kid, and these guys are 36 year old and have been playing some play in like the Swedish elite league and like oh, Russian, geez. Russian elite league and everything. And I'm some like you know, some Chilcotin kid from like Williams, like the Boonies, is <laughs> going to all these. So I, I I still kind of, you know, you get intimidated, especially by the track. Like I've actually never been intimidated by like an inanimate object before, like this track. Like people, I think there's probably about like five people get hoisted away on ambulances every training run, every training <laughs> run, and I was almost hoisted away on an ambulance, so I mean I was lucky, but on my ankle in Quebec City, but yeah, it's you know four guys skate down the track at around 60 kilometers an hour. We do jumps, we do um, you know 360 stuff, and I, yeah. Physical endurance, like I was watching some of his runs and some of the other participants, you know, just because when you uh, search that on YouTube, you see all these walls that you climb. It's a, a lot of it is endurance. It's not just about skating. Oh, it's yeah. the physical climbing up these ice walls looks like it. It looks like what they're doing. And then, you know, going down the other side. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm not... You know, I, I mean, I like to run, but I, I don't think I would like to go that fast. So there is no personal protection on you either. You just have your skates and probably knee pads maybe and gloves. Yeah, it's it's all hockey. It's all hockey gear except your stick. And um, actually, you know, when I do interviews, like I did an interview with like MTV and all these other places, that and there's always these like a Red Bull representative staring at you and saying like, it's it's a, it's a safe sport. So like, when like I'm doing these interviews, I have like a light in my face. I can see a, like the Red Bull rep being like, "You better not say that it's not dangerous because it's." But you know it, it's 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 pretty it's pretty dangerous. But it's it's I mean you get like motor like dirt biking all you know that's all dangerous. So it's like it's it's I mean it's hockey too. It's just as dangerous as hockey, I guess. How did your mama feel about that that sport? <laughs> didn't want me to go you know even with like you know she was hesitant you know on on a lot of stuff but that's um i i, I just really like extreme stuff i like skydiving i like bungee jumping so i guess that's kind of every mom's worst fear because she even had to sign my skydiving you know papers when i was because i was too young i think yeah. i was 17 oh, so man. she had to sign the life papers <laughs> oh my yeah. Being a mother, I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, that's really interesting. Really interesting stuff. So um, 
we've posted the qualifying run as it, so you can have a look at that in the classroom um, when you get some time um, but definitely interesting you have quite the colorful background when it comes to um, the sports you've chosen the production of um, films in addition to your career and where you started at the age of 15 and you're 20? 19? 21. 21. Very young. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else that you would like to talk to. Um, you talked a little bit about your trip to Africa, um, a, a new rollout of a short film next year and in the next year moving to Toronto. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully that's, uh, well, I, <laughs> hopefully that goes as smoothly as, as smoothly as that, um, you know, with the short film, it's going to take a lot of, because it takes place in the 60s, it's, so it's going to take a lot of effort. Um, my next short film, by the way, is called The Clouds of Autumn, and I'm co-writing it and co-directing it with my roommate and fellow filmmaker, Matthew Taylor Blay. Mm -hmm. And he just did a, uh, a, a feature documentary he's completing with the um, Canadian author Eric Walters. And uh, we're, we're, we're kind of combining our uh, film knowledge and f expertise and kind of seeing what, what can happen with that. So it's going to be a big project. It's going to be amazing, I think, hopefully. I mean, well, I think, you know just being having it completed I'm happy with that I mean just having accepted in all these festivals I could I'm totally you know I don't care if it doesn't win awards or anything I'm just happy that I completed it happy that it was accepted <laughs> into all this stuff so the clouds of autumn what brings you to Toronto if you don't mind my asking uh, well I went to imaginative and I could just I don't I don't like in Toronto and I don't know if it was just the festival but I could just feel, you know, the determination on so many young people that were there and that moved to Toronto because they wanted to accomplish, you know, I guess their dreams. And I, it, you know, you, when when you when you surround yourself with determined people, it like rubs off on you. So that's why I like to surround myself with a lot of determined people. And and um, so I get the whole feel. I you know the city even. Um, uh, I, th I thought I wouldn't like it because, you know, from like Williams, like Vancouver and everything. So I thought I would miss, I thought I would, you know, try to get the uh, the mountains and ocean and everything. Mm -hmm. But I um, thought I would miss that. But, you know, I really like Toronto. I, you know, I guess this is the culture, the people there. And it's kind of film is moving to Toronto from Vancouver, unfortunately, because of tax credits and... Toronto is essentially like everybody was calling it the New York of Canada. Right. So I, I think, you know, I'm I'm 21. I think you know if it doesn't work out, I can always move <laughs> back. It's, that's so I, it's like, yeah, I, I really want to try it out for a couple of years to see if 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 it's right and to see if it can move my career forward in any ways. So you spoke of the the lady from Toronto that's. Um came up to you. Is she out of Toronto as well, the little elderly? Oh, Alana Sabomsu, and she's, yes. I think she's, she's Mohawk. Oh. So she's from, um, I, I guess, uh, Ganasadage or, or Ganawage, somewhere I actually don't really know, so, but, um, um, she might not even be Mohawk, I totally forgot, it's Mohawk Algonquin, it's from the east, and, um, yeah, so she she's from there, and she she will she said to come to Toronto too. Everybody who I said who I met there said to you know try out to Toronto. You have to come to Toronto. So I, I want to visit Toronto when there's not like a big festival just to see how it is. Mm -hmm. But I think I mean I think I'll, I'll I think I want to because I essentially I want to move from creating period pieces with First Nations film to kind of make it urban. Mm -hmm. tell urban stories mm -hmm. and I think that would be it's the perfect transition from when you know the blanketing is 1800s the clouds of autumn is 1960s mm -hmm. and then my next one will hopefully take place you know uh, present time so I think Toronto would be the perfect place 
to find producers, production companies, people just surround myself in the industry. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay, so somebody is saying, okay, um, Nuka, I missed quite a lot of the beginning of the interview. Perhaps you can recap what you touched upon. Um, probably with the technology going down a lot, there was probably, even though we were mm-hmm. recording, yeah, yeah. we could just go back to maybe uh, recapping and talking a little bit more about what we began talking about. And I think with, with more you talking about the blanketing. Yeah, I think that was... Uh a lot of problems on, I guess, production and post-production we had. Uh, you know, the film deleted a, a week before I premiered it, so I had to completely redo the film, re-edit it, uh, I should say. And, and you know, we premiered it in front of uh, my home community, and it was an amazing event. And, uh, yeah, I think, uh, let's see, I've, I've got a terrible memory. So I, I think um, a little bit more around the challenges and the successes, you know, around the filming because you produced, you you wrote the script, you mm. the funding, the yeah. overall putting together of the film itself. I yeah, there was a uh, there was um, well, I, I just moved from Williams Lake to Vancouver, and I was really trying to find myself culturally. And um, it was kind of, it just came out of, you know, the blanketing kind of just came out of my my wanting to learn my culture again and doing research, and I was really interested, and I kind of wrote a script for my teacher, and then, you know, that evolved, and it kept going and kept going, so it, it I learned a lot about myself as well as I did research for my film, so I think that was, it was a really good, really good experience, which I'm thankful for, just for that so who helped you now now that you talked about the cultural piece because now you know I'm remembering you know the the, the series of sessions that that we had with um, you and Elisa and William um, you know you're all these role models for our youth you know in the school system and you brought up something interesting is the cultural piece that's the connection that you all talked about is is um, making those cultural connections to your community, to who you are, and really finding out um, who you are and the challenges. So, so when you were looking at putting the blanketing together, who did you talk to about the costumes and, or not the costumes, sorry, the regalia and um, those types of the cultural pieces? Because you had a vision in your mind, but there was also that piece of, mm-hmm. okay, I need to put this together yeah. for what they're going to wear. Um, a lot was with my family, you know, uh, 15, my grandmother had 15 kids, all Chilcotin. Mm-hmm. So I have a lot of uncles and aunts. And uh, so I asked a lot of them, and I looked into some old documents that um, came from the schools on my home reserve, mm-hmm. you know, I, I asked some other elders from the reserve about um, the story and what 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 they wore back then, and uh, and also, you know, I looked at as a reference Helen Haig Brown's film of and what she what she did with the Chilcotin people there, mm-hmm. and uh, I guess and it was just my own research. And you know, I, I asked I asked an elder to create um, costumes for you know the for the Chocom people, and um, and ended up kind of there was a communication problem where I knew I should that was a that was a that was a, a situation where my you know um, where my being a director I should have stepped up, but I was still new to this and you know I didn't want to. Uh, get mad, but I didn't want to, didn't want to, because, like, she was an elder, right, and I went to her for help, she was doing it for free, essentially, but the the, the costumes turned out to be nothing that I wanted, and, like, completely the opposite of what I wanted, and so I had to create the costumes myself, and um, I used, I went traditional as possible, and I even, actually, if, if you look closely on on the men's um, clothing, each each of their clothing tells a story through okay. the art on their clothing. So I wanted oh, to have that because I, I, I discovered um, Chilcotin artwork 
on 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 baskets and everything and I, I implemented that into the clothing mm-hmm. so each each of their piece tells a little story that I that I so I, I kind of told the story with their little clothing and with the overall kind of thing so it was uh, it was it was huge thankfully though um, the entire you know the chill coordination they were all so helpful because they were so proud that their story was going to be told you know I guess they, they didn't really care how or why it was just an amazing feeling for you know mm-hmm. these people from these communities who don't really get a lot of attention in terms of you know to get a lot of attention that this was actually happening so mm-hmm. So yeah. yes, I do. You, I do remember you mentioning that you put a lot of, you did put a lot of the regalia together for the participation. Not only were you producing, getting lack of sleep, but you know, ensuring that all the um, actors were fed and on site, mm-hmm. and um, recalling that when Will was on here too, that every nine seconds of the film, when he spoke of you know, his transformation into a wolf on the Twilight Saga is, he said it was a full day of shooting for that nine-second wow. clip or something like that, so. Yeah, I mean, you know, just, you know, my short film is eight minutes long, and, you know, we shot it 15-hour days for three days straight, and wow. it's like, and um, even with my Halo videos when I was, you know, 15, 16, there would be sections and videos where it was three seconds long and it would take me probably about two months to do a three second thing. Wow. So it would transition in effect. And yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's, that's, what, that's what I really, really want to get across with all the, uh, all the uh, stuff I'm doing online, you know, posting behind the scenes, all of this stuff, is I want to get people, the youth especially, aware of how much work but not, not only how much work, but how amazing it is to make a film mm-hmm. and how cool it is because it's so cool. It's like the coolest thing. Well, well, it's amazing, though, that, you know, behind the scenes because, you know, every time we, you know, we talk about this and discuss the blanketing, that each of the pieces, so now when the classroom actually watches the blanketing, you know, yes, it's eight minutes long, but at the same time, hearing that the regalia tells the story itself, like, you know, yeah. you've done a lot of history and a lot of research that, you know, that is a part of you. It's a part of your history, and, mm-hmm. you know, it's just amazing work. So um, I had a note to ask you something. I've got little notes going all over the place here. So many notes. <laughs> yeah. Remember. I'm sure it'll come back to me. Um, so maybe if you tell us, a little bit about more about your challenges and I know we spoke of that the last time moving to the city and the difference of um, coming to city life mm-hmm. and your transition here into the city a little mm-hmm. bit more about thankfully in in Vancouver there's a really tight-knit group of First Nations filmmakers and um, I was able to to join them and uh, but unfortunately a lot a lot of you know cities have um, a cultural and First Nations culture in Vancouver so I was really thankful for that um, and I was really able to even right now I'm still still you know getting in play you know I'm doing I do workshops with kids you know around BC and everything and I'm, my my colleague Damien Bouchard who's also a First Nations filmmaker um, you know, he's introducing me into like the, you know, the, the sweats and I'm just getting into that. And that's a whole other community of people that are amazing. And it's just, and it's, it's hard to, to just get out there and just kind of just be like, Hey, my name's Trevor. Can I do this with you? <laughs> like, that's not like, so it's, it's really hard if you are, I guess, you know, really shy or getting into a city that you've never been to and kind of hesitant to make friends but it's you know everybody deals with that right I guess in school and work so it's it's kind of 
I was fortunate that there is there is really nice. And I mean, even in First Nations, people are so generous. It's unbelievable. In like imaginative, I had like a hotel kind of problem, and people who I never met, they were like, you know, um, this woman named Giselle and her husband Archer. They just said, hey, Trevor, you can stay at our house for as many nights as you want. And you know, they had food. They cooked. They were like, hey, Trevor, you know, here's all this food. So, and you know, you you can't really, you know. It's hard to experience that, you know, outside of First Nations. I'm not saying, you know, other cultures are not like that, but it's just, it's, you can just feel it with First Nations people. And I think, you know, I think, yeah. I, I, I think you're right. Like, I mean, I have now been in the city for a year and just putting yourself out there. And I mean, I'm much older <laughs> and that you know finding our culture in the city where do we go who do we look to look to and um, you know just even partaking even when you do attend events right putting yourself out there which in our communities you know we see um, community gatherings and we're a part of that we walk into our band halls and it's like oh hey, hey hello hello you know I walk into the friendship center now I'm getting you know, to be known and, you know, begin to familiarize ourselves, but I still have yet to pick up my shawl and put on my moccasins and actually get out on the <laughs> dance floor to dance, right? I keep saying every Tuesday, I'm going to do it tonight, and then I'll just sit there, you know, and I'll watch, and I enjoy watching and listening to the music, or to the drums, I mean, because it just it just feels like a piece of home when you hear it. It's yeah. like family night, watching the little kids run around and things yeah. like that. It's finding those environments totally. that connect us and make yeah. us feel like family. And what I've noticed, too, is, you know, there's a lot of serious First Nations issues. And, you know, you hear a lot about, you know, in gatherings about, you know, leaders talking about that. But then at the same time, it's... You know, it's what I really love about First Nations people. We can, we laugh at like everything, and it's so it it just makes me feel so good, and it makes me feel at home when 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 that's happening. You know, like you were saying, you know, you you don't really, you know, put on your moccasins, go in the dance floor, but at the same time, you can still, you know, you can still watch and laugh. Like I mean, it's I I find it amazing how how easy and how easy it is you know first nations people just laugh at everything it's so easily mm -hmm. and that's why actually I'm, i really want to make a comedy too like so bad mm -hmm. so i mean i'm thinking about that like a future comedy as well partner with somebody like is it ryan mcmahon ryan mcmahon yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that would be me um so okay here's a couple comments here trish Trish is asking, I may have missed the question due to audio, but what are your plans to, to promote the film, um, Schools and Knowledge Network? And then there's a second piece to that um, by Mr. Joe um, out at School District in Chilliwack. Can we organize a viewing at a theater? So it looks like there's lots of interest in your film. Wow. I totally, uh, I, <laughs> I was actually kind of just, kind of ramping down on the on the publicity for it and everything I was kind of uh, um, gonna focus on my next short film but if people because it's essentially it's it's me doing literally everything for it so you know I kind of have to um, go between work and my next short film and then this one and uh, I mean if if people want to see it I'll have no problem for uh Doing a um, doing a talk what I did in Williams Lake where it was for three hours and it was um, in front of a group of you know 450 people and I did a talk about my life and where you know where I came from what my inspirations were for each one of my films my earlier ones and then at the very end I showed the blanketing I had a Q and A so I mean if 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 you're if people are interested in that if I get enough people then then totally but for in terms of uh publicity for knowledge and schools i'm kind of just um i'm kind of just happy that people are considering that so i'm and i think actually i, I think people on my facebook and twitter are probably so tired of hearing those two words the blanketing because <laughs> I've, I've just been kind of ramming it down 
people's throats and um yeah but i mean you can you know like the facebook page uh facebook.com slash the blanketing and there from there you can message about if you want a copy or if you'd like to have a screening because i mean i'm totally down if 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 people are wanting me to to go to their communities and screen the film and have a talk i'm totally i'm totally down for that that would be great that um would actually be exciting right that mm -hmm. for um students to see what a screening looks like and mm -hmm. to yeah. hear about you know how this came to life and you know to go into detail about um you know how you said the regalia had significant meaning behind the pieces and to hear some of the words of the elders when you were putting the regalia together and how you came to choose the site that you did the filming on mm -hmm. and i know now which leads me to the to the question about you know the weather cooperating and you know the time of year that that was all uh -huh. shot right because as we know we were transient in our transient people mm -hmm. when it came to um hunting grounds yeah. and the time of year that it was that we were in different places in our traditional territories uh, totally and i i i really i wanted I was living in Vancouver, and you know my family were like, "It's going to be cheaper if you shoot in Vancouver. It's going to be you. Ha you should do it here." But I was like, "It's it's you know the, the rainforest is not going to fit in with the type of clothing that my, the Chukwum people had. It's not going to fit in. It's just not going to fit in." So I really wanted it in the interior, and I was searching all around, and um, uh, I. I ended up we had ended up exhausting all the places we, you know it didn't work in my family especially my uncle I remember because I was he was driving me around in his truck and he was like okay what about this place and I was like no it's not gonna work what about this place no then they were getting frustrated <laughs> they were like you just gotta pick a place it's gonna cost too much money and I was like it's it's gotta be perfect though so we ended up driving you know um two to three hours away from my home reserve of Anaheim to Nimaya to Chilco Lake. Right. So, and I, I, I knew in the back of my head, actually, I was like, okay, it's, it has to be shot Chilco Lake, but I want to check out all these other places. So we went to Chilco Lake and it was perfect. And I actually, I remember standing on top of the truck, like on top of the hood mm -hmm. and my uncle was like, hey, get down. But I was, I was so in the moment of seeing like the entire film take place in front of my eyes right here in this location that I even remember almost like crying I was like I felt so good and we it, it turned out because Chilco Lake is the traditional area of you know the Chilco people mm -hmm. we were we came from around there and um, yeah and luckily during filming it was in August you know we actually had 25 degree weather everybody was sunburned but it was all, it was all worth it, yeah. So it, it's really interesting because um, you talk about those powerful places and connecting to culture. And a piece of this film took you back and connected you to your culture. It was a part of, you know, who you were. But it's also uh, a part of your career, right? That it all begins to tie together in those powerful grounds that connect us back to who we are. Um, because I had the opportunity to go to um, another part of American history, though, um, was the Custer's Last Stand. You know, uh, was it the Battle of the Bighorn? Battle of Little Bighorn? Yes, yes. So, you know, just the power of, you can feel, you know, in, in the Montana, southeast Montana area is like just the power. You know, you feel that when you are out there on the land and, seeing yeah. you know how you said you had that moment everything is coming together and it's yeah. just the connection to the land and you know it feels yeah. great and it's like weather's going to cooperate and yeah totally and i think and you know you know being indigenous aboriginal first nations any you know f connection to the land is huge and you know when even like with art i think is for first nations people connection to the land you know you start to know who you are and once you start to know who you are you can express yourself better through art because 
And a lot of people, a lot of First Nations people who are living in the city, that you know, they use that with their, art, you know, not being able to, to be on the land, not, and they express that through their art. And that's, I think, that's huge with First Nations people is, in art is, you know, is is connecting to the land or trying to even um, Jeff Barnaby, the director of Rise Three on Goals, he says that, you know, we can't change history, but with film and everything, we get a chance to, you know, live something that we kind of wished we lived or wish would have happened, right? And his mm -hmm. film really, really embodies that. And because, you know, at one point, the entire, at Imaginative, you know, it was full of First Nations people. At one point, the entire theater, during the movie, like it wasn't at the end of the movie, the people jumped up and were clapping. And then they had to remember to sit back down and watch the movie because, <laughs> You know, it, 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 it brings us together, and I think, you know, connection to land is really, 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 you know. Powerful. Really, yeah. It is. So um, there's a couple comments. Let me catch up on the comments. So Trish is saying, thanks, and I encourage Trevor, um, role models like you are inspiring. I will like your Facebook page. Um, oh, welcome, Barb. Um, good morning. Um, your mom is joining <laughs> us. Of course, she did. We did chat. Um, I think it was last night or this morning that with Trevor departing for two months that she said this would be her last time to be able to see you for two months because I'm not going to be able to see you yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome, Barb. And hey, Mom. <laughs> um, and Trish also states, I encourage you to keep promoting and preserving your culture. Yeah, and it, it, and it is. It feels like in, you know, I'm 44 years old. Um, it's an ever evolving process about learning our culture and mm -hmm. realizing like you say what makes us feel good you know here in the city you have to kind of modify and um, you know like you say the sweats you know they do sweats in different areas it's finding those mm -hmm. connections to the people as well and it's nice to be First Nations to be able to find those people and um, make those connections to you know to further enhance um, our culture and practicing our traditional ways Mm -hmm. um, school curriculum, definitely an interest and definitely interest in, in pursuing that with school dis, uh, the Chilliwack School District and hosting. So maybe over the next two months that that's something that we look at doing. It sounds like a really exciting venture. So Mr. Joe, hopefully that's an area that we can further explore because I think I just met Sherry... I didn't just meet her, I know. I went to um, UBC with her. Sherry, she works out in the, the Chilliwack School District as um, one of the support workers as well. McIntyre, I think that's her last name. But if that's something we work on for your return, maybe you know that's a possibility if we do a screening. I always thought the red carpet effect was <laughs> exciting, right? That you know when you did the blanketing, I really wanted to um, actually go to Williams Lake and my car yeah. broke down and I had to get oh. a new car so there was all these different challenges and Barb was saying well get to ride with you know and <laughs> it, it just wasn't feasible at that time but it would be nice to put another um, and I know you're trying to wind it down and work on you know your your future of your next short film but you know it sounds like there's definitely still a need and the interest in the schools because I know I'm still excited that it I, I believe, you know, when I've read through the various um, curriculum, that it does meet that curriculum piece um, of a different point of view on uh, the Chilkootin War. Not only that, but it's actually a piece of the history. So history and um, mm -hmm. of all that nature. So definitely looking forward to working on some future projects. Looks like we'll yeah. be this together. Yeah, I, I even had... Um um, I I th think it was you. I don't know if it was you. Uh, somebody was adding me into a, a little curriculum online thing. I totally it was it was with UBC, and they added they asked for my videos. Oh, did they? They, yeah, and they and kids are gonna like learn I guess who I am, and they showed a. They uh, they wanted the video get up move up, so I sent them that. It was it was a little online thing, and I I can I totally I forgot because my memory's so bad. I feel so bad, but 
Yeah, and they they asked for my info and. and what is the get up move up? Oh, that's the that's the really yeah. short PSA I did. I think it must have been two years ago that I won the five thousand dollars. Oh, gathering wisdom. Gathering wisdom, yeah. So I mean, I yeah, there's been a, actually a lot now that I think of it, a lot of educational interest in it. You know, even there was a, yeah, like the Smith, Smithsonian Institute. Institute. There was a woman there who talked to me and it imagined native and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 it's, it's. I haven't really been thinking because I've been, you know, really trying to wind down. But mm-hmm. I, I think, I think that's an even, that's an even bigger opportunity to help other people out instead of just me. Well, it'll be interesting too to to see that some of these museums. Now that you're speaking of it, some of these museums that host um, our um, artifacts from across the province highlight, you know, how they have that little video learning area where they show um, um, DVDs on mm-hmm. a regular basis. Like, it would be neat to have a film such as this highlighted there, like, you know, at the museum, UBC Museum of Anthropology. And what is the museum in Victoria? The Royal BC Museum. Yes, the Royal BC Museum. It would be neat to see. Yeah. You know, your piece just wow. so out there because it does meet, you know, it, it does, you know, when it's produced by you and it's, it would just be nice to see that promoted in, in that aspect as well. Um, we do have a couple of people typing, so um, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so... Well, while they're typing, do you have any good uh, media jokes that you want to say while we're trying to <laughs> clean? Good, keep it clean. <laughs> good media jokes. No, no, I'm totally, I'm totally like a, I guess a physical comedy kind of guy. Oh, not, not a joke really? comedy. And I've got, I've got videos on an old YouTube page that I have where I just do stupid stuff, you know, like dancing in the middle of the street and just really. Yeah, I mean, I've got. That's why I really want to do a comedy, is because I started with comedy almost. Oh, really? Like with, you know, I did the Halo videos, but then I was also kind of doing small stuff on YouTube, and I just really, really want to do a comedy. Mm-hmm. So you do more comedy, not scaring people. I, well, actually, I do have like a 10 minute. <laughs> it's I actually have a little 10 minute thing that I did for school that's a that's a horror movie but I can't watch it now because I think it's ridiculous but <laughs> like it was a little thing I did with you know recording myself and I don't know, I actually thought it was pretty scary I thought it was it scared a couple of people but, really and Halloween is coming I guess if if people want to watch it they can they can uh search I think it's it's really hard because it's a whole metaphysical kind of thing where I, it's almost like I was recording myself like you know like a video log on YouTube like hey guys what's up and then it turns into like an alien invasion oh really and it's pretty scary but it's hard to it's hard to find on YouTube I'll post it on my Twitter actually after this if people want to add me on Twitter it's uh at Trevor Mac 22 um so the Ch- uh, Mar- Barb just said that the Chilkootin Nation just celebrated and honored Chilkootin War Chiefs on October 26th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those were the uh, the five chiefs that were hanged um, in response to the Chilkootin War. So that's uh, no, like Chief Lots Outsign and his his son and other other chiefs, and um, it was a pretty it was a pretty uh, it's a really important um, event in Chilcotin Nation history. Yeah, I wish I was there. I was, I've just been busy. So busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like Trish is actually saying, um, going back to talking about a screening, 
across the province. I'm sure Nanaimo might have a viewing. I will talk to my counseling supervisor, Elder Headworth, who teaches First Nation Studies at Vancouver Island University. I actually know an elder there. Um, I'm connected to VIU through my uncle. Um, he's one of the elder supports as well up there at VIU. Um, Ray Sam. Is that right? Ray Sam? Ray. Yeah. Um, so and Barb's also saying check out um, the the comment she just made about the Chilkoot and Chiefs being honored. They call it Clan Clotestine. Clotestine. Well, Some people call him Clotestine or Clotestine. That's the chief. Yeah, that was the main chief in the Chilkoot War. So interesting. Mm -hmm. All very interesting stuff. So it looks like we're going to have some more work off spinning from this learning circle. Actually, it would be very exciting for us to be able to um, take this out and have this an event for students to attend. And, you know, we do actually become a part of that. Or you, not we, you become a part of that school curriculum. We support that, you know, that piece of it and with the like I said earlier in the beginning the changes to the um, school curriculum that this is definitely a learning resource that supports all of you know some of the messages and some of the learning objectives in the different programs um, are there any more comments online and Trevor I will let you um, give you some floor time to just talk about your experience here and anything else you would like to talk about um, I don't know I guess it's, it's been it's been a really really big kind of roller coaster ride with this you know it's uh, it's you know something that I could have never made with without the community without without people so that's why I really like because I, I go to communities and teach kids how to make videos through uh, Provincial Health Services Authority, and uh, you know I also work on videos, you know racism PSAs and everything because, you know I, you know the the strongest thing for you know First Nations people is a great community, and when there's a great community, there's a lot of support, and when there's a lot of support, you know kids can thrive, and so I'm really, I'm really into uh, you know help really trying to help improve communities and try to you know youth empowerment you know and uh so i'm really because you know none of this would happen without because well, like I, I guess i'm still a youth oh, yes. you know <laughs> oh yeah so i'm still a youth and you know i really want i because like i'm just i was some kid from Anaheim reserve that did all this you know imagine you know there's 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 got to be kids out there with you know these this, these talents that they haven't discovered yet because of, you know, I guess financial situations or, or um, you know, situations at home. And, and you know, they can do amazing things and they just don't know yet. So I really want to help inspire kids. So I guess if, 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 you know, if people want me to do screenings, then I'll, I'll totally be down, you know, give some talks because it's... Uh, Youth empowerment is huge. And that's where I'm leading to, like, hopefully, you know, like you mentioned the is the Provincial Health Service Authority, that maybe um, they helped um, outreach you to different communities via mm -hmm. workshops. So maybe that's something we'll explore in the next mm -hmm. couple of months, um, how we can make this partnership happen and then um, assist with the screenings in communities yeah. and what that could look like. And of course, drawing upon your experience in the Williams Lake area, mm -hmm. what can that look like in the Chilliwack area and uh, potentially yeah. on Vancouver Island? What would, what would that look like and what can we do? Because it sounds like there's definitely a need for this type. I mean, we saw the response in Williams Lake. It will probably have the same response in, you know, the Chilliwack and the Vancouver Island areas as well. Mm -hmm. um, and what I was going to say is, you know, your last words were, um, brings to mind, you know, youth empowerment, Dr. Peter Apinga, you know, that his quote always sticks out in my head. You know, we're not here to, you know, to, to impress you, 
as youth, but we're here to impress upon you that Aboriginal youth can do anything, mm -hmm. you know, um, succeed in, in spite of all the challenges and yeah. everything else, overcome those barriers and succeed. So that's definitely, you know, culture and succeeding, and we always appreciate, you know, the hard work that you're doing and um, definitely um, wish you the best in your future travels to Africa and... <laughs> Um, are there any final comments on chat? I will leave you a couple minutes to type. But as you can see on our screen, um, it's been there for the session, is upcoming learning circles, um, Aboriginal midwifery. Um, we have that tomorrow. Um, Fantastic Foods for Babies and Moms, Jerry Caston, will be back. He did a dynamic presentation. We're trying to do our youth circles and learning circles in series, so health and nutrition, um, Indian res residential school survivors. Um, there's a series there that talked about the, his the historical factors, now moving into the healing pieces of Indian residential school um, for different groups. Um, in our population. Um, so November 7th, we have the UBC Aboriginal Student Recruitment. We have Joseph Graham, Nadine Alvarado, Hensley, and Melody Marke Markle coming to the circle to talk about um, our student recruitment process for Aboriginals. In addition to November 12th in our series of the Indian Residential School Survivors Series, um, we have the witness blanket, and some of you may have seen that at um, the Truth and Reconciliation, if you were able to get down to um, the site here in Vancouver back in October, September. Um, so they will actually be here presenting and talking about the whole project and the history, and that it, it's a national project that brings together all the pieces or bits and pieces and each piece tells a tale of that particular residential school um, across the nation. Like, um, So this is the kickoff to their BC um, tour where they're just going to go into communities and to where these residential schools were and get a piece of the history to add to the blanket. So it's tying everything together. Um, in addition to that, we have November 13th, we have YouthCo Presents uh, contra Contraception. So there's an ongoing series that we ha have with um, YouthCo that it's youth presenting for youth. So join us for November 13th. Um, November 20th, we have Healthy Eating for Wellness and Chronic Disease Prevention and Management. We have Rebecca joining us from First Nations Health, excuse me, Health Authority. Um, November 23rd. First, we have the Aboriginal Safe Sleep Program. And on um, November 26th, for some of the participants that work with our youth in the school systems or in communities, we have trauma-informed practice with Indigenous children and youth, uh, Natalie, Natalie Clark. Um, November 28th, um, another series in our Indian Residential School Survivor Series is Grief and Loss with the Balance Wheel. We have Shirley David joining us from Williams Lake. Um, we have traditional foods on December 3rd, and we always rec uh, recognize your feedback and input. If you would like to actually send us any comments, questions, further questions about today's presentation or past presentations, areas of interest, a lot of times in the school systems you're doing something good in, uh, or in your school district, if you would like to highlight something and bring that and share that with other youth and other um, communities across the province, please send us an email. We're happy to, to put those pieces together to, to link you to communities. Let us be that mode of connection to communities if you have a good practice or best practice that you would like to share with people. So if there are no other further comments that I'm missing um, from downtown Vancouver and Musqueam Territory, traditional territory, we'd like to thank you for joining us today. And I do see somebody typing. Um, you're welcome, and thank you again, Trevor. I appreciate you coming back to the circle. Always a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me. I always enjoy this. Yes. So have a great day, everybody. You have to say bye, Mom. Oh, yeah. Bye, Mom. Don't look. <laughs> bye, Mom. <laughs> Oh, Barbara's.
see you.